Jerry? Hello, Petra. How are you? <coughs> I'm okay, man. I'm okay, Sissy. How are you doing? I'm all right. Uh, still struggling with a computer. Is it? On computer. Um, listen, you will make Mr. Cecil, Mr. Yeah. Nchona again a co-host, me. Yeah, I will do that. I will do that. You know? um, no, I think including you, you also no. as well in form. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I'll, I'll um, just submit people and all of that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, I will make this a uh, co host, including you and Paul and um, who else? Yeah, yeah, I think, I think three of them. Yeah, that's all. The... Yeah. So that okay. you can assist me for those that are coming with that I am unable to see them. Yeah, no, that's fine. Okay, my dear. Okay, I have got your message, man, but I will respond to it after the meeting, you know? Um, that's fine because I can't can't work yeah. now anyway, so it's fine. Oh, oh okay. No, it's it's that uh, you, you were saying at the minutes of the sixteenth, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah,
Tete Bolton, are you there? <clears throat> yes, Mamu Komba, I'm here. Okay, the chairperson requested me to chair the meeting because he'll be driving during the time when he starts the meeting. Oh, is it? Yes. Okay, okay, okay. So he will join us later. I'm not sure if he'll be able to join us, but he says when they start the meeting, he will not be in the meeting because he's driving. Oh. Driving. Okay, okay. Also, okay. Thanks. Thanks, Mam Gomba. Thanks, man. Um, yes. But okay, we still have uh, three minutes more, ne? Yes. Yeah, we still have three minutes more. Let's just uh, admit those who are still coming in. Okay. Good. Happy birthday, Honorable Gomba. Happy birthday. Oh, thank you very much, Honorable Kako. Thank you very Happy much. Happy birthday, for my friend. Happy birthday. My friend, you Kumbule. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I miss you. Oh, I so miss you, my friend. Oh, my friend, you don't know how much I miss. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come and see you. I'll be in Parliament uh, maybe after two weeks from now. Yes, I'm still in Jersey also. Okay, okay. <laughs> so miss you, my friend. Happy birthday. As oh, thank you. Old. Oh, yes. We are growing old, you know. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, but and we thank God for the days because others could not see their next birthday. Exactly, exactly. But you, yeah, you are... No, Style, I can see you are beautiful, you look fresh, and you are bright, <laughs> my friend. <laughs> yes, my friend. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, dear. Okay, my dearest. I don't even know if I have enough that. No? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that will be a problem. <laughs> yes, I know I know I have, but I want to to buy. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So that I am um, safe. Uh, good. Uh, uh, happy birthday, Guma Guma. <laughs> yeah, happy birthday. Thank you very much for, for the better wishes, sir. Who's yes, who's the Lord, the Lord must face. continue to shield you and give who's you wisdom. <laughs> Is that chair? Yes. Oh, chair, maybe you are better. <laughs> the Lord must continue to shield you and give you wisdom and the intelligence and the resilience and the passion yes. for life and the yes. embraceness that you always have. And yes. the passion yes. for work. Yes. So we wish you <laughs> everything good. Oh, thank you very much, Chair. And uh, yes. I'm so happy that you are back, Chair, to this meeting because I was supposed to 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 share it on your behalf. And um, um, by God's grace, you are in time. You know, I'm happy that. <laughs> no, you're you still going I'm to heading chair. back. I'm heading over to, to you. Chair. It's only now. You are still going to <laughs> chair. Honorable members, <laughs> let's take this opportunity to welcome you to the Portfolio Committee on Tourism. Today we are dealing with South African tourism. Yesterday we dealt with matters pertaining to the Department of Tourism. And uh, at the end, we will then have to adopt the minutes which were circulated yesterday. Ndadebo Tina, do we have apologies? 
Um, yes, Chaperson, I've got uh, one apologies um, uh, at my side. Uh, the Honorable Sitole uh, uh, is also attending the PC on transport chair. That's fine. Yes. Thank you, Chair. We will, yes, we welcome the Chairperson of uh, SA Tourism, the CEO, the collective of the members of the board. You are also welcome, and we appreciate your commitment to the work of the government working through the board. Our responsibility is to do everything possible to make sure that we use every opportunity at our disposal to grow the economy, to create jobs, to end inequality. So we appreciate the work that you do. Honorable members, uh, later on, I'm going to request that uh, Honorable uh, Gumba should chair the meeting because I'm not in a good space where I am now. But I will do my best to continue to be part of the meeting. Honorable uh, uh, Sitole, we are told he's not available today. He's in another committee. Honorable uh, Makubela was en route to somewhere. I hope she does not experience connectivity problems. So without wasting time, I'm going to give over to SAT to then do the presentation. The Deputy Minister, Ntate Masalel, uh, I'm just checking if uh, Brafish is here. Uh, Brafish, 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 Brafish. It doesn't look like we've got Brafish here. How's uh, Mamuluk? Honorable Minister. Good afternoon, Chair. Good afternoon, Honorable Members. Yes, I'm yes, here. I don't know why I, I assumed. I don't know why I assume that today it will be the deputy minister with us here. No, he's still, he's still here, the deputy minister as well, uh, Chair. Oh. Uh, yes. Yes, yes. No, you are welcome, my sister. Thank you very you much. You are also no, our mother, 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 sister, mother, everything. So you are welcome. We also welcome the deputy minister to, to this meeting. So I'm handing over to you then, honorable minister. Let me allow the Deputy Minister to lead. I'll come in again. No problem, no problem, no problem. Uh, thank you very much, Chair, uh, and, 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 and good afternoon. Uh, uh, Members, uh, the minister, the chair of the board, CEO, and the team. Uh, we we are presenting this 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 annual report for the SAT. Uh, as you know, we, uh, under the 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 conditions that. Uh, are very complex in terms of the development in globally, uh, which has been presented by the outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, as you all know that COVID-19 has had a serious devastating impact into the tourism sector, uh, which affected both globally and a local market in the tourism sector. Uh, with many businesses, as we know, unable to, to operate. Uh, some of them are struggling to survive uh, due to, to, the, to this uh, a, a devastating impact of the, of the virus. Uh, the, the same report uh, of the SAT is premised from the, the Economic Reconstruction and Recovery Plan of which key amongst the economic recovery, uh, uh, reconstruction and recovery plan 
uh, is the whole question of the the pillars that uh, the, the 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 ERP is 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 is, is anchored upon, and then uh, arising from as we know arising from the from the economic reconstruction and recovery plan, we, as we have reflected in the in the portfolio committee in the departmental APP yesterday, was then the development of the tourism sector recovery plan, of which the plan includes some of the key strategic interventions of which. Key amongst the strategic interventions is the stimulation of domestic market uh, so that we, we come up with targeted initiatives uh, for, the, for the local market. Uh, we were engaged on various initiatives and campaign uh, to activate the, the domestic market. Uh, one of the of, of the of the of the strategic intervention is strengthening the supply uh, through resource mobilization and investment facilitation uh, as part of making sure that we are we attract investors uh, into South Africa. And then the other one is to support for the protection uh, of the core infrastructure and, and, and assets. The assets that we have, we need to protect and preserve them and support them so that uh, they don't collapse at the end. And therefore, these are some of the issues that uh, we are doing. So as part of the, of the, of the SAT's mandate in, in terms of marketing uh, uh, South Africa and also making sure that uh, there is activations of the domestic market, there are various activities that uh, the, 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 the plan begins to, 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 to identify and, and, and be able to, to deal with it. Uh, we have, as part of the plan, uh, categorized the market into, 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 into various categories, of which some of the categories uh, are listed in the plan in terms of what are the categories that will be targeting, uh, what are the countries, what are our markets that will be focusing on, so that uh, regardless that there is no, there's not much uh, international work that is taking place, but we are able to make sure that we remain on the map uh, 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 as 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 a country. Uh, we. We are therefore presenting this as APP uh, under a, a different environment. Uh, as you know, last year we had a cut, uh, a substantial cut from the SAT. But this year, uh, the money that was cut last year was brought back. Uh, uh, although, as you know, we've got a huge challenge of the the image and the negative image that uh, is always uh, protect, I mean, projected in the international market about our country, especially arising from the variant that uh, is now called the South African variant and other impediments that are, uh, are as a result of uh, the way how certain things uh, society behave and conduct itself. Uh, 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 those are some of the negative tendencies that we, we have to work very hard to make sure that we change uh, the wrong perceptions about, about our country, South Africa. It's a mammal task that the, 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 the SAT has to engage upon uh, and make sure that uh, the matter is, is, is addressed. Uh, I'm sure the minister will then will then update the committee on the process around, as you know, the the, the board's term of office uh, uh, did expired, and 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 there was a process to to reappoint a new board, 
which subsequently a, a decision was taken that we need to extend the current existing a, a, a port. A, a, I'm sure the minister will, will, will be able to take you on board as to a, from from here, what is the way forward in relation to, because there was this proposal from, from cabinet that there's a need to merge some of the agencies a, of which a, SAT a, seems to be the one is among those that needs to be looked into of a possibility of merging it with, with other entities uh, so that we have, we don't have we've got a coherent approach in terms of how do we market a, a South Africa as, 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 as government. Uh, I know there was also an, an advert around the CEO uh, seen uh, uh, in the analysis of the, of the, of the committee that they, they want to understand the progress I'm sure the minister will also be able to, to brief the committee about progress thus far, uh, so that at least you understand where are we standing on these matters. We we know that one of the key business that we are doing it's it's meetings, uh, which is nice, your meetings uh, uh, and conferencing, uh, which is one of the hardest hit thus far because of the limitations. Uh, in terms of meetings and all other related matters. But the, the team has adopted the new normal in terms of how do we make sure that while we are, we are unable to meet in big numbers, but we still continue with some of the, of the activities uh, uh, that uh, should take place so that we're able to make sure that we prepare ourselves as we promised to the committee last year that uh, will be working with the, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the associations, the national associations to make sure that we build a capacity of in small towns uh, to be able to host some of the future uh, 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 conferences uh, in relation to, so this work that is progress that has been done and we're still going to, put, to pursue the matter so that by the time there's full operational in terms of the market being opened, we'll be able to then make sure that the, we host some of the events and meetings uh, throughout the provinces uh, in, in, in terms of small towns and, and villages. But we need to make sure that we prepare them uh, to be able to, to host uh, uh, some of the conferences that are manageable in size uh, uh, at the end. So generally, the, that's the, the, the input share that we can make as opening statement uh, for, the, for, for, the, for the chair and, this, and the CEO to, to take the committee through uh, in terms of our annual performance plan. Thank you very much. Uh Thank you very much, uh, Deputy Minister. Um, I'm not sure if the minister has something to say or my, we must shoot straight to the chair and after the chair, the CEO of SAT. Mm -hmm. Minister, do you have anything? Do you have anything to raise? Thank you very much, Chair. I think there were issues that DM asked me to, to address. Uh, happy birthday, um, honorable member, uh, wife, chair. <laughs> um, yes, um, just indeed in terms of the board, um, we have extended the current board in terms of, um, we had advertised, um, when we advertised as the process was proceeding, you remember members that we briefed, um, the committee that there's been a decision around repurposing and uh, repurposing of state-owned entities so that we avoid duplication and a lot of work that sometimes we, we spend a lot of money of government in areas where we could be consolidating. So in the process after when we wanted to go to cabinet to appoint a new board, we were advised by cabinet to say, it's best to extend the current board, which indeed we agreed that we extend the current board for a year um, so that they can manage the transition. 
So the current board, as communicated by cabinet, has been extended to oversee the transition in terms of, firstly, the measure of and the reconfiguration of the entities that are responsible for marketing. I can confirm that two entities that we have started a lot of work and quite good progress have been made. It's between SAT and Brand SA as the first initial process. Um, almost done, we are ready to go to cabinet with proposals. I have expressed my view in terms of um, where we'd want to see what happens, communicating with the acting minister in the presidency who is responsible for Brand SA and would request president first to concur and then would be able to take that into cabinet as a decision. So once that process has been announced, we would be able to go through and announce the procedure in terms of what is going to happen. Firstly, we'll have a, um, what we call transitional period. Um, and then secondly, then the stabilization because there are acts that are involved that would need to be looked into. There are legislation and legal environment that would need to deal with uh, so that we are able to respond to those. So that's very critical for us, honorable members, that we are able to deal with that mm -hmm. and be able to respond in detail. Um, the processes around the um, CO, the board will, will deal with that because it's within the purview of the board. Uh, they will be able to give us an update and the, the portfolio committee an update in terms of stabilization within that while we continue to do our work as, as tourism portfolio and the work that we need to do. That's what I, I think I should add from the DM. The DM has covered quite a lot of issues and then we can hand over. Thank you very much, Honorable, Mem Honorable Chairperson. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Minister. And um, maybe if we can go straight to the CEO or to the chairperson of the of the of, of SAT. We are the next one. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members, uh, Minister, Deputy Minister, uh, the CEO of South African Tourism. Uh, and the EXCO team, uh, we are all sitting around the same room uh, at the offices and, and, and we can hear all of you loud and clear. Uh, I think uh, the Deputy Minister has actually covered the whole of the presentation. And if we add to that, we will actually be wasting the committee's time. Except maybe to, clear, uh, to, to, to add in on the issue of the progress on the appointment of the CEO. Uh, I'm sure the members will be aware that that process is actually governed by Section 24 of the Tourism Act uh, in terms of uh, what it requires the board to do uh, in concurrence with the minister. Uh, the term of the current CEO extends uh, in, at the end of September, so as of the recruitment, uh, which the advert went out uh, uh, in February uh, to close on the 12th of March. Uh, because uh, for obvious reasons to manage the issues of potential conflict, we couldn't run the process internally. Uh, in terms of our HR uh, team here. So we had to get on board the external independent uh, recruitment agency or specialist that was going to assist with those advert job profiles, response handling, and the initial pre-screening of all responses that were received. Uh, on average, or just to mention there are about to received close to 200 applications. Uh, the team then went uh, painstakingly through each and every application uh, to eventually come with a short list uh, of potential uh, candidates that uh, uh, could be uh, interviewed uh, by the board committee uh, as a first uh, round of interviews. So we've just received that report last week, Friday, and the board uh, approved the list that was submitted. And then uh, now the processes of uh, interviews will then begin in earnest, which is accompanied by all the necessary processes of uh, 
uh, necessary uh, psychometric testing, uh, verification of qualification checks, uh, as well as all other uh, vetting requirements that are required before we come with the candidate. Only thereafter will then hand over the process uh, to the minister uh, for concurrence once we have uh, arrived at a, a potential candidate that we will have deemed uh, to be uh, suitable to then take over from, from, from the uh, current incumbent. Uh, other than that, uh, we still have about five months to go before the end of the, of the term. Uh, we, that's why we started early so that we are not found uh, wanting uh, as, as, as the time uh, comes close to the end, as if we we're not aware that the contract was coming to an end. Uh, then uh, beyond that, it will be to introduce uh, the EXCO team, which will then be now going into the detailed presentation, uh, because as the DM has said that it is grounded on the uh, sector recovery plan in the main in terms of what interventions uh, as tourism will be planning to undertake in the ensuing uh, financial year with a view of aiding uh, the sector to recover after or to, to lessen the impact uh, of the COVID-19 de de devastation. Uh, and, and as the plan unfolds with the implementation, uh, we are alive to the uh, dynamics that keeps on changing uh, with the with the with the with the, um, uh, 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 the COVID as it progresses. Uh, be, be besides the issue that few weeks back uh, we again came to this day number four or, uh, in terms of the U.S. and then yesterday uh, one learned that there is a cargo ship from India that is currently quarantined in Devon. So those are the dynamics within which an environment within which we operate, but to the best of our abilities will be a, 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 as we focus to the domestic market to be the one that helps us in the interim, as well as the, 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 the regional market as, as already a, a, a reported on, in fact, a proposed since last year when we're starting to deal with the the impact of the COVID-19 then. Uh, so we are in the process of uh, implementing that uh, those processes uh, towards the recovery plan that has since been formally uh, adopted by, by, by cabinet. Uh, the team uh, is led by the CEO, uh, Mr. Nchona, uh, and he will also then take a moment to also introduce uh, his uh, ex-com members uh, with us here today. Uh, thank you, Chair. Let me uh, uh, pause there. Over to you, uh, Mr. Cesar Nchona. Mr. Nchona? The CEO? Hello? The CEO? Um, sorry, my presentation. Oh, okay. Have we lost you, CEO? Uh, sorry, Chair, the team is just loading the, 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 the presentation. Um, okay. All right.
Honorable members, our apology, the, the, the SAT. The SAT is loading the presentation. They'll be presenting, they'll be presenting very shortly. Please bear with us. Um, Chairperson, can we ask either um, Mr. Boltino or Paul to assist because we all have this. Um, I'm just worried about the time for members. That is, if, if the SAT team has technical problems, the other colleagues do have the presentation with them so that they can assist us. Either Paul or Boltino can share the presentation because it has been set. Um, so may I ask the host to let me in, please? I'm just in the waiting room. Okay, I'm in. Yes, thank you. I think you can take the presentation down. I'm, I'm back in again. Thank you very much, and apologies for that, uh, honorable members. I had a bit of a glitch there. Um, I think as the chair had said, and the minister and the deputy minister, I'll get straight into the presentation itself. Um, let's put it up now. Sorry, may I ask the host just to enable me to make me a co-host, please? Jerry, can you make me a host so that I can put my screen up? I'm still waiting. So may I ask any of the secretaries to make me a host, a co-host, please? Because I'm unable to put the, share the screen without that. Uh, CEO, I, I see that Mr. Masimula is a co-host. Maybe he can assist. Okay, Paul, can you give me rights? Okay, I, I did the CEO. Are you okay now? Oh, thank you. I've got it. Thank you very much. Okay. Yes, I am. Thank you very much. <clears throat> oh, apologies again for that. Let me move a bit faster then. Uh, thank you very much for uh, giving us opportunity to present our APPs for 2021-2022. As the chair said, I'm accompanied by the full team of the EXCO team of South African Tourism. Uh, we'll be able to hear from them when we do the Q&A session and each one will be answering their particular portfolio has been set there. The document has been sent through. It is a total of 32 slides and I will not be going through all of them, but rather highlighting some of the salient features there. The presentation is in three parts, part A, part B, part C, and uh, part A and part B essentially talks about the tourism mandate in A and then part B are some around the strategic focus areas. That has been covered quite deeply by the uh, Deputy Minister, so I will not uh, repeat all of that in terms of the situation analysis, both internally as well, I mean externally, and then the Chair has spoken some around the internal uh, situation analysis as well from that perspective there. Um, as I said, I'm going to go through quickly on the policy mandates, on the acts, and rather just take a moment possibly around the marketing investment framework. And this is quite significant because it's a new philosophy or rather an enhanced philosophy that we're introducing at SA Tourism. With limited resources, we cannot be in every single uh, district or country around the world. We selected deliberately based on data, based on performance, based also unlikely to win as well. 
And we've come up with a cluster of 24 markets split into 16 for growth and eight for defend markets. And we firmly believe that these are the markets essentially that are going to help us to pull through and you know, recover as quickly as possible. By also alignment and coincidence that these 24 markets before COVID brought us 92% of the arrivals uh, before that. So there's good correlation you know, in terms of uh, that perspective there as well. There. Um, the strategic focus areas, I think our mission and vision are very well known um, to, uh, to, to, to the honorable members. Uh, but I'll just spend a quick moment just to talk again about the pandemic, the environment we find ourselves in, the very fluid environment, as the chair had said, you know, uh, where a lot of things may be out of our hands. Things like um, policy decisions by our source countries, um, advisory, I mean, travel. So driven by key three elements. Uh, apart from the investment framework. One is what are called the government st st stringencies. And again, this is where policy decisions are made by foreign countries, you know, either on, on the red list or banned list or not being able to travel to South Africa, that becomes outside of our own uh, purview as it were. Accessibility to travel becomes quite key in terms of networking South Africa back again, you know, into the world and make sure there's connectivity. As we speak right now, honorable members, you know, one of our most traded routes internationally has always been London and South Africa. I can tell you right now, as we speak today, there is no direct flight between London and South Africa. In fact, it is even difficult to even hub via um, the, the, the Middle East. Uh, and a, a recent example was where one had to travel from uh, South Africa to Doha to Greece, then ultimately to London. That gives a bit of a sense of how disconnected the world is at the moment and uh, some of the challenges that are basically over there. This slide then kind of gives you a sense in terms of where we find ourselves at, how dynamic and fluid are we at, where are we going to win. It's to us that domestic is our bread and butter for the foreseeable future. It is the only area that is green. It is the area that is within our control and has very minimal um, restrictions as it were. This is then followed up by the continent of Africa as well. We're looking at the land borders, those that can drive through here, the SADC space as an example. Now that is also quite a place that we're going to win. You can see that then the rest of the world becomes quite red as many as either impose travel restrictions on us or there's no connectivity, etc. from that perspective there as well. Honorable members, I'm now going to go um, you know, um, straight into the, the plan itself. On this slide here, you'll see this is how we've actually split up our annual performance programs. This has been years or so. Uh, we have in total this year 42 KPIs or measure uh, indicators as it were. And these are split up into five different programs, right? Program one, you know, it's, it's built with uh, corporate support. Program two is business enablement. Program three is where the bulk of activities sit, which is leisure, tourism, marketing. Program four is business events, our my space as well. And then program five becomes our quality assurance, tourist experience or customer experience in the normal terms there. As I said, honorable members, uh, we have a total of 42 KPIs. In program one, our focus is on corporate support. And in here, we've got KPIs or, me or performance measures around the key important elements, internal control, making sure that both external and internal audit recommendations are fully complied with. And that's a quite a key important indicator for us. The second one becomes around payments of invoices within 30 days. That's also quite key. And we've been performing quite well. We want to make sure that we consistently come on that side. And number three on this one is business process automation. Because we operate essentially across different jurisdictions in different time zones, uh, across different 11 different offices, we want to start to streamline and make sure that we automate as much as we can so that the bulk of the heavy lifting in terms of compliance, in terms of administration is done centrally here within South Africa. Then the teams offshore are freed up to do a lot of the value add work, engaging with trade, you know, engaging with customers that side, as opposed to doing a lot of the admin and compliance issues as well. So that work is actually coming uh, quite nicely through to make sure that we can roll out this business uh, process automation. 
Number four is quite a bulk one around our human resource management and development. This is again is key that we want to make sure that the profile of people who are in South African tourism reflects uh, the country that we're in, from women, from uh, both at SA Tourism largely, but also in scene and top management as well. We also have a focus of people with disabilities employed at SA Tourism, and then also the designated groups around, um, you know, Black people, African, colors, and Indians, as it were, across all um, occupational levels as well. So that makes sure that we never forget the focus on that side. Program two, honorable members, is around business enablement, as I've said earlier on. This one then talks about how we are connected with mostly our stakeholders, both from the industry side and also as well from the product and the service provider side as well. So we have also embarked on making sure we are aligned with um, you know, the provinces, the nine provinces, which all have uh, tourism, um, uh, provincial tourism authorities, as it were. And in this one, we are formalizing the agreements with them. So that there's alignment in terms of APP delivery and there's alignment in terms of one messaging, both domestically and uh, outside our borders as well. The second one looks at industry engagement as part of the recovery. We want to make sure that we start to pull through those small players, those SMEs we've been speaking about for a very long time. We are firmly in the space, honorable members, of not just doing the awareness part, but conversion becomes important. So when we fly to campaign, it is one thing to show you how fantastic it is, but we want to make sure that you are able to convert, you're able to buy, you're able to procure, and we want to make the SMEs essentially the heroes or beneficiaries of this activity. We've got a very good and powerful spotlight as other in tourism, and that's essentially the work that we're doing on the portals, both in B2B and ultimately in B2C, essentially, making sure that those businesses that have been are in the rural side, are in the outskirts, are also brought online and start to get activity on that side. Uh, honorable members, we, I think it was the DM uh, that spoke about our reputation as well, globally and also domestically. This is important to make sure that we are doing the right things and hitting the right spots mm -hmm. to our um, constituency, as it were, uh, our target audience. And this is merely just making sure that the collective output of the work that we do and the investments that we make are measured in that reputation index. And we can also start to engage specific remedies where we see essentially that there are elements not coming to par in terms of our reputation index as well. And that's a new KPI we're introducing to make sure that we are on top of this uh, particular element. Uh, the next one, honorable members, really around reports, making sure on thought leadership. This assists the sector to navigate its way through this unknown areas because we sit in a very fortunate position where we do a whole lot of uh, surveys and we want to put them out there so that the industry and trade can make um, you know, informed decisions. Then the last one complements that one in terms of making sure we've got sector engagements and start to interact with them on a regular basis. On the members, program three is where I said, this is where our bulk of our activities sit. This is what we do at SA Tourism. That's the bulk of our marketing investment as well. And this talks specifically in terms of the arrivals. I did say earlier on is that the focus is on domestic, then regional, then ultimately international. And this is represented in terms of the numbers that we are putting behind, uh, you know, in terms of this. You would see from the international side is that normally we'll probably be sitting at about 10 and a half million arrivals, but because we understand that the environment that we're in is fluid and the majority of the population of the world would not be traveling in any meaningful form for the foreseeable future. We have really kind of harnessed ourselves around the static space in terms of the arrivals there. And I think that's part of the activities that we want to see tend to come through from a regular basis. Uh, it, the risk obviously is um, things could change. If South Africa goes into a third wave or fourth wave, that hey, will have a definite impact as an example of what we can do. If, as an example, you know, the rest of the world, as that's happening right now, start to go in more and more bigger lockdown, that also has an impact as well. But we felt as an organization that we need to put our stake on the ground and make sure that we can drive towards a specific target uh, as it were there. So we have deliberately segmented it into the three areas of domestic, regional, and ultimately international uh, as well. 
As I said earlier on, um, honorable members, that uh, this is the year of the brand. As we have said, we're not expecting big numbers in terms of travel, but it gives us an opportunity to really brand South Africa, to restore it to those levels of positive recognition that we've always yearned for uh, as well. So whilst in the markets, we're not expecting big travel to come through, we want to do the work that, you know, we are not forgotten as a destination so that at the right time, the conversion becomes easier when the world starts to uh, travel again. So there's a big focus around the brand strength in. Are you recalling South Africa? Domestic is the name of the game, as I said earlier on. And this is started to see in terms of doing what you call deal-driven campaigns. Those that are deliberate around driving specific activity into the country. We want people to move. And we, we've seen South Africans heed the call very well here, uh, honorable members. You know, anything with a long weekend, we start to celebrate here at SA Tourism because we see activities starting to happen, uh, you know, from that perspective there as well. So that's a uh, big kudos. Also, we have a lot of South Africans that would have gone on holiday overseas because they're not able to travel. We are converting that inwardly to make sure that we can uh, come to the party from that perspective. Digital is here we are putting a KPI around uh, the number of engagements we want to see South Africa coming through on that side. Now, honorable members, on the regional side and also on the global side, it's the same issues in terms of making sure You, oh, you are not audible now. I'm not sure what is to what is happening. You hear me? Yeah. See, oh, you are frozen. I'm frozen. Please. Oh, it's some network basically on our side. Um, are you still not able to hear me, Honorable Members? No, I can hear you now. You can you continue. Can you? Ap apologies for that. I think yes. Um, so I'm saying here on this last one here is that we've got the world. Uh, Expo 2020 in Dubai. And essentially, it's an opportunity where the world gets together and profiles the different countries there. We've got a month where we're going to be focusing on tourism activities, and we are taking this opportunity again to reintroduce South Africa to the world, as it were, in terms of, uh, you know, as a, as a travel destination there. Can we move on to the... Ooh. Sorry for that. So, honorable members, I'm just trying to go to the next slide. This program then deals with um, around the business events, which I've spoken about. And in here, we are, it's a very difficult space at the moment where the world essentially is not coming together uh, in any form or manner in terms of the MICE activities. But we have started to do some work there to make sure that again, we start to build the, the brand of South African tourism as a business events destination. Yeah, I think it's fine now, right? and also to make sure that um, the global uh, business events campaign is implemented. And this year is deliberate around making sure that we start to regain some of the lost and canceled conferences uh, that have been global. It is important to note and keep in mind here yeah, that typically the lead time in the space is anything between two, three to five years. So we are essentially bidding for conferences in the outer years that may not be, um, you know, and hopefully by then, we would have come to a solution globally as to the level of movement and also the pandemic itself. Again, here, the focus will be on domestic to make sure that we start to drive a lot of domestic conferences that are meeting the existing protocols of not more than 250 people within a room, as an example, under the current conditions of level one, 
should they change, will also adjust accordingly uh, from that perspective. Honourable Members, we have heard quite uh, loudly where you have spoken again and again around making sure that there's distribution across the country, especially in the villages, townships and small dopies, where we want to see more activities happening from a my side. We have put these essentially in the APP so that it has a focus and a delivery uh, element from that perspective. Our strategic events as an organization is in Daba and Meetings Africa. You will recall that in 2020, we canceled these essentially because of where the, the country was at and in terms of the uncertainty of the pandemic as well. We are now coming back with these in a hybrid format, uh, which is basically almost the, the standard that the world is adopting as we start to sort of come back then in terms of being able to host uh, business events there as well. Uh, Lilizella, it's important to celebrate and acknowledge businesses uh, that are in the tourism industry that have also been hard hit as well. And again, these awards will come through uh, in quarter three this year, obviously in a different format, but nonetheless, an acknowledgement of where we are at as an organization there. Uh, honorable members, this is the last program, program five, which I've spoken about, which is a quality assurance side, um, customer, um, you know, in terms of um, the, the satisfaction levels there is important. We've introduced a new You're not audible, and that was a very important point you're raising of in, what you've introduced. Mr. Ntona, you're not audible. I'm not audible. Yes, and you must start when you said you have introduced something new. Okay. I don't know what the new thing you've introduced. Maybe if you can start from Chairperson. there. Chairperson. Yes, person is honorable. Yes, I can hear you now. It's Honorable April. Can I be recognized, Chair? Yes, Honorable April. Chair, my suggestion is that uh, uh, that the presenter close the video. Maybe it will help him with bandwidth so that he he don't get lost here and there. Maybe if we can close the video, we will be able. We can book the the presentation. If it closes the video, we can uh, uh, hear him better and not lose him. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Okay. Maybe that is the good advice, Mr. Turner. I think if you yes. can just remove your for connectivity. I've done so. Yes. Start from where you said you've introduced um, on the quality assurance part of it. Thank you. Okay, will do. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yes. So I'm saying this one on program five, uh, on members, we have the net promoter score, uh, which is a new KPI we've introduced, essentially to make sure that people both traveling from outside the country and also traveling domestically have a positive uh, you know, experience of uh, you know, the tourism activity from that perspective. It also allows us to make sure that the quality assurance program right across the board um, is held in place and is also supporting um, you know, the activities and implementation that is happening around there. And this will be introduced in uh, quarter two and start to build basically um, um, almost a, a platform that allows us to be able to measure it uh, on a regular basis. The second one then deals with the graded establishments. And again here, honorable members, you know, um, the deputy minister did speak about uh, the recovery plan, looking at also making sure that we protect the supply side of the industry. From our perspective, it becomes quite key that, um, you know, from a graded establishment, we are able to hold those together and make sure we don't lose any businesses that are still operating from that perspective. There. So we put in a target and numbers, essentially, from that perspective that will help us to drive that activity. The next one is the Enterprise and Supply Development Program itself, a very important space here. This is where honorable members, you know, uh, we are focusing on three specific areas, building a cohort of what we call DMCs, destination marketing companies, uh, PCOs, which is uh, professional conference organizers, and also preferential procurement to make sure that internally, whom we do business with at South African Tourism is also aligned, you know, with the country's imperatives around women-owned businesses, youth-owned businesses as well. And, and SMEs, you know, from that perspective there as well. So all of this work then starts to drive those activities. 
important here, honorable members, we've said uh, going forward that at least 25% of total capacity or seats available at any format, at any forum that South African tourism participates in. So whether it be in Daba or ITB, um, you know, in, the, in, 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 in Europe, or whether it is WTM London, IMEX, et cetera, we want to make sure that we give an opportunity for SMEs that are market ready, be showcased over here, uh, and start to offer new and differentiated activities, you know, that one is able to uh, pursue in South Africa uh, as well there. The basic quality verification program is still being piloted. And then again, honorable members, this also came as a response to say that grading should not be used as an inhibitor for businesses, that grading should be an enabler. And this is targeted at those ones that are not yet meeting the formal requirements of our grading, but can be assisted to kind of move up uh, the steps as it were. And this program is currently being piloted in Eastern Cape and is actually going quite well in terms of recognizing those. These include places like homestays and others that previously did not have a category within the formal uh, space there. Honorable members, these are then are the 42 KPIs that we have essentially on board here. I'm now going to hand over to the chief financial officer who will take us through the financial side and then I'll come through in the end and wrap up. Uh, so over to you, uh, Nambulem. Thank you, Chair. Good afternoon. I'm on slide 21, CEO. Okay, I'm just trying to move it there, sorry. Thank you. South African tourism's approved budget for the current year is a total of um, 1.4 billion rand. And the budgeted revenue is mainly funded from the five income streams as shown on, on slide 21, uh, with just over 1.2 billion being transferred from the National Department of Tourism. Um, 50 million rand is funded from Tomsa Levis. 33.5 million rand is, is funded from exhibition income uh, with our biggest contributor being the planned hybrid in Daba and, and, and Meetings Africa um, exhibition. 12 million or just over 10 million honorable members is funded from grading fees. And the last revenue stream is 24.8 million, which is mainly linked to investment income. Slide 22, please. So slide 22 honorable members is a graphical representation of, of our revenue streams with the largest income stream emanating from the, the Department of Tourism, which um, totals just 91, approximately 91% of our total budget. Uh, I will then move on to the next slide, which is our total projected expenditure um, per program for the current financial year. So out of a total budget of 1.4 billion rent, an amount of 126 million rand has been allocated to program one, which is our corporate support. Um, business enablement, which is program two, has been allocated 84.9 million rand. Um, leisure tourism marketing, which um, is, is, is our biggest line item from an investment perspective, has been allocated just over a billion rand, uh, which equates to 72% of South African tourism's total approved budget. Uh, program four, which is business events, has been allocated 126 million rand. Um, and then the last program, which is program five, tourist experience, has been allocated 65 million of our total budget for the financial year. Chair, I will highlight activities within each program when I deal with the economic classification slides. Um, can we just, okay, slide 24. This slide, similar to the revenue slide, is also a graphical representation of our budget per program. And what's key here is to just note that our biggest line item is program three, which is linked to leisure tourism marketing. I will then move to slides which deal with um, economic classification at, at program level. Um, so for program one, which is corporate support, an investment of 126 million for the financial year um, was made. And it's mainly to drive in the goods and services line item. It's mainly to drive effective support services, strategy development and integration, uh, including business performance monitoring and, and evaluation activities. 
Um, part of the 60 million, as well as the depreciation line item of, of, 20, of 12 million relates to our investment in, 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 in infrastructure, especially in the ICT space. And that's um, with the objective of automating uh, critical business enabling um, processes. Then um, out of the total 126 million, 54 million rand has been um, allocated to employee costs. Um, on slide 26, um, which deals with our second program, which is the business enablement program. Um, we have a total financial investment in the space of 84 million rand um, with a total cost of employee of just over 16 million, so it's 16.4 million rand if you round it off. And goods and services, we have we have planned. Um, oh, there's a financial resource allocation of 68.6 million rand, and it's mainly for activities um, that have to do with data analytics and insights, uh, which are aimed at providing centralized tourism intelligence to support evidence-based decision making. And we'll move on to program three. Uh, which has been allocated uh, the bulk of our, of our total approved budget for the financial year. And this is in line, this is in line with um, the broader, broader South African tourism strategic focus on domestic, um, regional and select global markets um, in order so that we can create demand in, in, those, in those markets. So from a, a line item investment perspective, we've, been, um, we've projected 120 million rent budget for uh, employee cost. Um, the second line item is goods, goods and services, which are aimed at uh, demand creation activities, which is um, just over 890 million rent. And then the line item depreciation talks to mostly in-country assets that we would buy. And that's 3.2 million rent. We can then move to the next slide which is program four, um, which, um, and this is where our business enablement, uh, business events program, which is responsible to grow our nation's business events industry. And it has been allocated a total of 126 million rent. Um, and of the 126 million rent, 14.5 million rent has been allocated to employee cost with the balance uh, being goods and services. Um, which has been allocated to find to find activities aimed at developing leads for future business events in order to ensure that South Africa can bid for suitable events to be hosted, as well as business development activities in order to maintain South African South Africa's position as the number one business events destination in Africa and the Middle East. And then, lastly, I'm on program five, which is our tourist experience um, program. This program has been allocated an investment of 65 million rent um, with a cost, of uh, a cost of employees of 19 million rent, uh, goods and services of 45.9 million rent for activities that are aimed at improving visitor experience for both international and domestic tourists. Program five chairs our last program. So I'll therefore pause here and hand back to the CEO. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, CFO. Uh, honorable members, that then concludes our formal presentation uh, to yourselves. Uh, I think I'll hand back then to the chair and uh, we can take some questions. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks, Thank CEO you. and the team, and I trust that I'm audible. Um, uh, Jefferson, uh, here is our presentation of our APP for the planned 2021-2022. Uh, uh, we are therefore uh, uh, preparing ourselves to take any comments or questions that honorable members may have. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much uh, for the presentations. Um, I think it's now the time for the portfolio committee members to ask questions. If I may start with Honorable Mpushe. Honorable Mpushe, 
Greetings to the Honorable Minister and the Deputy Minister, the Chair of the Board and the CEO and the entire collective, uh, the support staff of the Portfolio Committee. Uh, happy birthday, Chairperson. Wish you many more years to come. Thank you uh, very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, 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 I wish to welcome the presentations uh, from that of the Deputy Minister and the editions from the Minister and all the presentations that were done by the uh, board. I, I welcome the presentation in, in, with a view that uh, the, the, of uploading the department on the audit outcomes, on its audit outcomes. My, my question, Chairperson, will be on the uh, planned future meetings. Does the board have a plan uh, to host the hybrid meetings of such magnitude? Or has there been any engagements to solicit support from the Minister for Communication on the broadband uh, rollout plans of the communication department? given the fact that uh, with technology data is, is too expensive, uh, is there any support that they will be getting from the, the sister department, which is communication, uh, Chairperson? Also, I wish to applaud the, 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 the board on the plan, the recovery plan, uh, which I so wish that they would have an, a, an effective implementation for it. Uh, lastly, Chairperson, I applaud the department on the plan to continue with meeting the targets on the 30 day uh, uh, payment uh, for service providers. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Bouche. Uh, Honorable uh, April. Honorable April. Honorable April. Okay, can I go through to Honorable Gumbi Sanganani? Honorable Sanganani Gumbi. Honorable Gumbi Sanganani. It's not there. Um, Honorable Luciso Macubella. Uh, good afternoon, Honorable Chairperson, and uh, good afternoon, colleagues, honorable members, and uh, Minister and the Dep DM and the leadership of the entity led by the chairperson of the board, uh, Mr. Dube. Uh, honorable members, uh, first, I want to appreciate uh, the, the briefing that we have received uh, this afternoon uh, uh, with regards to the recruitment process of the, of the new CEO and also the extension of the, the office of the, of the board. As, as outlined by the minister and uh, by the, the, the process of, of recruitment by the chairperson of the board, uh, it's, it's appreciated, uh, at least as the committee, we, we, we do know now where the process is. Well, the, question, the first question that I would want to pose to the entity is one, in our last engagement with the, with the entity, we requested that a, a honorable, that the CEO and the, and the entity must repackage the messaging of South Africa with regards to the variant, uh, because we, we, we understand that throughout the world, the new COVID variant that was uh, discovered uh, here in South Africa and some other parts of the world 
was now called the South African variant. And we requested that uh, perhaps they should be a repackaging uh, the entity working with Department of Health and other stakeholders in putting forth a positive message and dispelling the myth that this is a South African variant. Because we've seen how COVID has mutated and has had variants uh, elsewhere. Brazil have their own variants and strain. Uh, we've seen now India also having their own variants. But we, 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 we see that the one that was in South Africa was negatively publicized. I just want to find out uh, in terms of the repackaging of the message because I didn't get it through in the presentation. Well, I ap apologize if maybe extensively it has been said because uh, I was struggling with a uh, connectivity. The second question that I would want to pose to the entity is, I've understood that uh, SAT's APP currently is centered around the tourism recovery plan, which is also linked to the broader policy, macro policy objectives of the country and recovery plan as outlined and, and presented by, by the president, the reconstruction and development uh, plan of, of, of to, that, that would be uh, employed by government to recover uh, after the aftermath of, of COVID. But given that we have a, or our APP is centered around the, the recovery plan, but we have had budget declines or the budget has been cut. I want to perhaps find out how will these recovery uh, objectives be met without the financial support of such a, a plan, of such a plan that is geared towards uh, recovering the tourism sector. Now, the last question that I have is around the issues of conferencing and meetings. We, the, the DM clearly put this in his introductory remarks clearly that the mice sector is the hardest hit because people can't converge in their numbers due to the fact that uh, we are still not out of the woods. Uh, COVID is still a reality. But we have seen how different companies are now introducing the, the travel passport and testing that would uh, be done to enable the traveler to be able to go to meetings or for people to converge in their numbers. The impediment to this is the fact that testing is still very much expensive. Rapid tests are still much expensive. What is it that uh, the entity is doing to mitigate a, a, around this, the fact that perhaps uh, look for cheaper, al cheaper alternative means of testing so that when people are going into a conference, they can converge, have their test, rapid test, results come out, and this will enable the, the my sector to start working again. Uh, those are the three questions that I have, uh, Chairperson. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Makubela. Can I go back to uh, Honorable Gumbi? I saw him on the screen. Honorable Gumbi, is your turn? Yes, thanks very much, uh, Chairperson. Sorry, my, it was my own computer which was freezing. <clears throat> Um, now, I, I, I mean, a, a lot of questions which I would have had, um, I think, were more appropriately directed uh, for the departments and which we uh, had the opportunity to do so yesterday. But I, I, I would love to hear the view um, of the, the, the CEO 
with regards to this with regards to this increasingly standardized tourism protocol where people um, are able to enter into a country um, provided that they've got um, that proof of a vaccination uh, and whether he would agree that South Africa should embark on that road as well. So I just want to get that view uh, um, from him uh, around South African tourism because um, it only makes sense in terms of our own efforts to begin getting in a flow. And I know some countries, for instance, uh, perhaps maybe who are a bit more advanced yet in the vaccination program themselves um, have, have started to even bring in tourists, even maybe even vaccinate them. So we might not have that capacity, but should we not be allowing those who have that vaccination who are COVID free um, into the country? Thanks. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Honorable Gumbi. Honorable April, I'm not sure if you are back. Honorable April? No, I've been, I've been here all the time. I think I've been covered by the by uh, by the the chairperson. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Defreitas. It's your turn. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I thank you to the um, CEO and the others, uh, the officials that presented a comprehensive uh, presentation. Only thing I would like to ask is, um, you know, obviously we've got to, as the CEO says, we've got to aggressively now market ourselves and get back on track to try and get to where we were before. And um, we surely can't do this on our own. If he could just tell us, are there any partnerships that exist uh, locally and internationally uh, because, you know, SAT COP won't be able to do it on, 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 the, on its own with limited resources and budget to assist them in the work of promoting the country. Um, so if you could just tell us a little bit more and unpack it for us. Uh, I'd be interested in that. Thank you. That's the only question I have. Thank you very much, Honorable Tifreitas. Honorable Bepani Moteka. Honorable Moteka. Honorable Moteka. Okay, we'll pass and come back to him. Honorable Kleko, Sheila Kleko. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson, uh, Minister, Deputy Minister, Entity Board Chair, and members of the board, CEO, uh, and your colleagues, parliamentary staff. Good afternoon, all. Chairperson, uh, firstly, I must appreciate the, the presentation from SAT, but uh, I have some few clarities that I'm seeking. Uh, if I can take uh, the CEO back to the presentation under program one, uh, I am concerned that uh, in 2.1, they don't uh, reflect on targets. The other question that I want to ask is whether the, 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 the department or SAT or the ministry is still committed in the target of bringing 21 million additional tourist arrivals by 2030 under the current situation of lockdowns because of COVID-19 with its negative impact? If yes, Chairperson, it's good. If no, what are they planning as a strategy to deliver according to their commitment? My third point would be, Chair, during, this, uh, during the past and present situation, Traveling is associated with high risk, which results in most people having a fear to travel. Uh, what is their plan such that the marketing that is their core business yield positive results? Because we believe as a committee in value for money. The money that you spend in marketing must yield in positive results. I have another concern, Chair. Given the case in Deben now, 
the Deben port where a cargo from India. Uh, there are suspected and confirmed cases of COVID-19 there. Don't you think, Minister, it is the time to approach the command council uh, regarding the workers in those ports be considered as frontline workers and also those working in airports because of the movements, high movements that are there. They be, they, they be prioritized in the vaccination program. Lastly, Chair, now that everyone is going digital or we're advancing in, in technologies, all sectors are advancing and including people, tourism also, what impact does that have in the projections that you have? Because uh, we rely on visitors. Sorry about that, Chair. Sorry. Where was I? Because everyone is going digital, we will not uh, host big conferences in the near future because of the pandemic. Is it not threatening the tourism industry, the technology, and that we are all going digital? As the case is now, because we are holding a meeting now virtually, we are able to meet, deliberate, and take resolutions. So what is the, are their plans informed of the situation? That was what I was going to ask, Chair. With regards to budget, I'm just commenting, glad that uh, the amount that was taken away from their allocation is back, is back for the year 2021-2022 financial years. Thank you very much, Chair. I've been missing everyone in this platform. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, thank, thank you very much. You've been missing you too. Um, Honorable Gago. Uh, we have uh, Honorable Samina. I'm not sure if um, Honorable Tifritas will help me to to find Honorable Samina. Yes, I'm here. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, so thank you for the presentations. Hello to all colleagues. I have uh, three very quick questions. Um, there was mention of quality control as one of the uh, KPIs that was going to be implemented in the second quarter. Um, as part of the quality control of, of tourism businesses, are one of the measurables going to be how eco-friendly and um, aligned to responsible tourism um, these establishments are, um, since that is the direction that we want to push the industry into. Uh, and that's the way that the world is going um, internationally. Those are the trends towards more green tourism and being more sustainable. Then um, there was a mention of a budget to improve visitor experiences. What does this exactly entail? Um, if that could just be fleshed out a bit. And then on a previous meeting that we had, we had discussed engagement uh, with South African tourism, uh, the department and other stakeholders, for instance, like the banking sector, COGTA, um, looking at payment holidays, um, rates holidays, et cetera, just to assist um, domestic tourism and establishments that, you know, um, have had 10% um, occupancy and who can't really afford to keep up with these payments and are, are basically going to become insolvent uh, should they not get the assistance from the other sectors. So have these engagements taken place? Um, what has transpired since then? If not, when will they happen? Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable... Samima. Um, Honorable Gule. Gule. I'm not sure if um, I, I'm, I'm pronouncing it accordingly. Honorable Gule. Okay, let me go to Honorable Chairperson of the committee. Honorable Supra Mahuma Pelu Obakeng. Are you with us or are you still not available? S O R. S O R. Is Honorable S O R available? No, it looks like he's still caught up uh, somewhere. 
Um, I think it's time for myself to ask a question. I cannot deny myself the opportunity. Uh, honorable members, my question is with regards to um, the, 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 the township I had, I had uh, um, the department presenting that on the third quarter of the year, of, on the third quarter of this year. It means it's just towards the end, towards the end of the financial year, the term before the last one, the quarter before the last quarter of the financial year. My worry is here, we see that townships, villages, and dorpies are being addressed at that time, including the Lilizela. My worry is here, what is it that we're saying uh, we are going to introduce? I heard you saying that today, your new KPI that you have introduced includes the township, villages, and dorpies experiences in, of tourism and activities in, the, in those areas. Maybe if you can unpack what is your uh, 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 planned uh, uh, activities in those areas, because we have never heard anything about them and the approach towards that. Uh, we know that you are, we, today we are not unpacking, but it's the plan. But at least just touch a little bit so that we can have an example of what is it that is going to happen in the township villages and Dorpis during that uh, 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 third quarter of the year. Because when you're putting things at the third quarter of the year, you might find that there are others that are also pushed, you know, which were pushed back at the beginning of the terms, but they are now overtaking the, uh, the, 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 the KPIs of the correct term, which must be taking place in that term, and which is now going to affect our townships villages and dorpies because they are in the nearly to the last part of the term. So it means now we are pushing our priorities to the very last part of the term. You know, we want to see the, the, the gross domestic product, you know, being contributed by tourism. You know, the GDP of this country must actually be uplifted by the same tourism. So I'm worried if we are we are definitely pushing these villages and dorpies and townships to the third part of the quarter when this has been an, a priority of this committee. Uh, I want to thank you for that um, opportunity for asking this question. Can we have the response maybe from the department on questions which were raised by the members of the, of, of this committee? Thank you. Over to the, uh, to the FAT. Honorable and Chair and uh, uh, honorable members, uh, we, we, we have received the questions and uh, I wasn't sure whether the, the minister or deputy minister wanted to start. So uh, that's why there was a bit of a pause. But if not, I will I will go ahead. Or oh, the minister seems like uh, uh, there is an input, so no, I'll stop it. No, just Chairperson, let's, um, we'll allow the, the executive yourself, um, TM, and then I'll be the last one, just wrapping up on the issues. All right. Um, thank you very much, Honorable Minister. I mean, Honorable Minister, um, I, I think I also forgot one good question here, which I think is very important. Uh, it's on the quality assurance. I'm just taking a, a little bit of a chance here. The, it's about what we um, requested as the committee to say that we want, we wish to see tourism uh, grading, grading council being um, allowed to, to make grading for free for people who want to, to come up to do grading. And I'm not sure because I had something that is not along the lines when it was presented here to talk about the free grading it seems like the department did not really consider that and there was no explanation to the, to the committee, to the uh, portfolio committee as to why is it not happening and also as to why there was no um, 
free grading consideration, probably if you can also uh, cover that in your response. Thank you. The person that the minister said may start, please continue. Okay, let me start, Honorable uh, 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 Chair. Uh, in terms of the questions, there are questions that relate to the, uh, the details of the actual programs, uh, which will be handled uh, by the uh, respective EXCO members uh, together with the CEO. Uh, but maybe just from a clarity perspective, I think uh, on one of the questions from Honorable Member uh, uh, Mbushe, in terms of the hybrid nature of the events, uh, I think our core events that uh, we, we are trying to do. Uh, to be fair, that is the first pilot phase of, of trying the hybrid uh, nature of those events. It's Meeting Africa and uh, uh, Indaba. Uh, yes, there are plans in place for it in terms of how it will pan out. Uh, but uh, having said that, we have not run a similar program before in a hybrid format. Uh, but we, we, we do have learnings from what has happened uh, abroad. Uh, so there was uh, consultations with the industry of uh, how, how, how those events could pan out. And, and again, uh, uh, they are meant to uh, demonstrate to the mice uh, sector at least in terms of how we could in the meantime still try to have such events uh, but within the the, 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 the the image of the COVID. Now what they are aimed to do as traditional as, as, as similar to the traditional programs is to let the international or our core market and trade partners and, and even a uh, uh, our, 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 our partners in Africa to be able to traditionally uh, come to uh, uh, South Africa and engage with the products that we have here so that they could then assist in planning the, the activities uh, for the travelers and, and tourists that will then be coming to the country. So, 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 so uh, from a hybrid perspective, in addition to those that will be allowed uh, per the number uh, 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 in terms of the cap number to be physically present, uh, it will still allow those uh, 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 abroad and elsewhere to still have access to the event. Uh, in addition to still achieving the core objective, it will also assist in reminding our core market uh, in particular that uh, we are still uh, 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 in existence. We still want to be on their top of mind. So that is that is the the whole uh, 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 objective around it. So in terms of then uh, 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 whether the engagements with the Department of Communications as to issues around the data cost uh, uh, that may not have uh, happened uh, on the basis of predominantly these events. They've mainly targeted the international uh, uh, audience in terms of uh, being having access to uh, the country physically in the past, but now we are trying to combine both. So, 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 so from that perspective, uh, we did not anticipate as as uh, as as mainly the core target being the domestic market that engage with it. Uh, in terms of these uh, uh, events in particular, there are others that are geared towards the domestic market. Uh, uh, the question from Kumbi, Honorable uh, Kumbi will be answered by the CEO, because the view was specifically requested uh, from the CEO. Um, again, from uh, Honorable Makubela, uh, the CEO will come in on there, except on the question number three, maybe. I could start there because it is around the issues of travel passports and as well as uh, the testing uh, as, as, as a means of uh, mitigating uh, or, or, or allowing the travelers to still travel freely uh, on the account that, uh, they, that they have access uh, or they, they have been uh, 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 engaged with these activities. 
and 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 the issue there is mainly around uh, the costing of that. So what we've been uh, looking at, at least from South African tourism perspective, is potential solutions uh, in terms of uh, getting or trying to understand which other. Uh, providers of the solutions that may be out there in the market because you could only uh, address the issue of costing if uh, there are a number of uh, uh, suppliers uh, that are doing that service. So that, that work is ongoing uh, as and when we get towards the close uh, of, of, of what the solution that will work for the country might look like, we will uh, engage with the committee accordingly. Uh, honorable uh, defrators, uh, in terms of any partnerships, uh, the CEO will address this accordingly, uh, but it sits within our market marketing uh, team and the CMO is here with us and he will uh, address that. Uh, honorable Pueco, uh, there were about five questions there. And again, uh, I think the main one was around um, Contingency planning in terms of COVID, what if our best laid plans uh, are disturbed uh, uh, by any other event uh, of uh, uh, either what might be happening uh, with the COVID? Uh, as, as, as I think we've indicated that uh, we, we, we do uh, acknowledge and appreciate the fact that the COVID environment uh, will always uh, throw in a spanner in the works, whether domestically or any of our core markets, which then affect at least uh, the, the, the movement uh, of people. Uh, with that being said, uh, uh, that's why at least for this year, the, the key focus of the plan uh, in terms of the activities, at least is to drive the domestic market, because at least that there is a bit of a a localized uh, control for a lack of a better word to say, uh, even if there is something as long as from a country perspective, uh, we are still uh, uh, traveling or, or behaving in a manner that still observe uh, protocols. Uh, uh, in the main, the, 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 the progression of the pandemic uh, will be in our control. So we do expect that from that perspective, uh, they will still be uh, traveling uh, uh, domestic, uh, which uh, uh, will be uh, fueled by, 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 by all sectors of the South African population. That is why that becomes our key focus. So the conditions planning is therefore aligned uh, towards that aspect uh, of, the, of the diversification of our, of our uh, traveling market. Um, uh, on the question uh, of uh, Honorable Shamina, I think uh, those issues will be covered in the main by both uh, 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 our quality assurance team led by uh, Amanda, as well as uh, uh, the CEO himself, and then uh, Honorable Gomba on the VSTD. Uh, again, there, there will be Amanda who will be dealing with that question. So maybe let me pause there and allow the CEO to uh, respond to the questions accordingly or any of the team members that uh, 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 he will uh, ask to assist him. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair, and much appreciated. Uh, I'm going to ask the executive team just to pick up the various questions there. Let's start off, please, with the CFO, followed by the CMO, and then CCBO, then ultimately the COO in terms of that order, please. Let me just answer those and then uh, I will round up. Thank you. So over to you, Nobule. Thank you, Chair. I'll address the question from Honorable Makubela on um, funding financial resources and, and limited budget for, for the current financial year and over the MTF and how we plan to expand that. So one of the, of the key projects in the current financial year is, is a financial modeling uh, project with the main objective of, of growing our revenue base so as to, to fund um, recovery initiatives. But in addition to that, we, as an immediate focus, we have with, with, with the limited budget that we have or limited financial resources, one of the goals 
that we took as we went through planning was to prioritize investment in domestic tourism um, because it will lead to recovery, then regional tourism, and then only limit um, investment in, 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 in select international markets to focus on brand work. Um, and then just lastly, as well as a supplement to, to enhance um, financial resources that are available as well as the stretch, what we currently have, there's an increased focus in our APP as well as certain divisional plans in, in, in certain areas on, on partnerships. We've identified partnerships that we can partner with so as to supplement um, then our current avail available financial resources. Thank you. Thank you. Um, TK, next please. Uh, thank you very much, um, Honourable Members, Honourable Minister, Deputy Minister, uh, Board Chair, um, Board Members and colleagues. Uh, the four things that I'd like to address uh, today, the first one is the question around, uh, you know, the, the brand and, um, you know, us being very, you know, careful about how we uh, invest so that uh, we make sure that we get maximum yield for the marketing investment that we put in. Um, the way in which we approach this is that this is the year of the brand, and we, we've got to make sure that the brand uh, of the destination stays top of mind in uh, all our source markets, and that we enhance, you know, the, the 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 brand equity both domestically and especially on you know on the African continent. So uh, the big deliverable in the APP, you know, is to do that global brand work so that uh, we're able to sharpen the personality of the brand, create something that is really, really memorable so that when the markets open up, we do have forward momentum in order for us to be able to go out and then convert uh, that demand. Um, as I think the CEO mentioned earlier, a lot of people are spending time uh, in front of the TV, they're spending time on YouTube, on social media, consuming non-linear content about destinations and about what's happening around the world. So it is very important that as we build this brand campaign as, and as we plan our partnerships, that we do so in a manner that is able to take our South African identity into spaces that are not inside the linear tradi uh, I mean, traditional media spaces. So that is the approach of, uh, that we're, what we're making around the, the global brand uh, in order to make sure that the investment is against the brand uh, and that it is not uh, necessarily put directly against conversion where the markets are closed. Then secondly is uh, around the issue about uh, villages, towns, and small dorpies. We have uh, now fully signed MOUs with all our provincial uh, tourism authorities, uh, which then enables us to work through them into each of uh, the localities. We did so at the end of last year and in the first quarter of the calendar year of this, this year, uh, working with the uh, uh, provincial tourism authorities, going around to villages, towns, and small dopies, and that um, uh, report will be coming through to, uh, uh, um, to uh, the committee um, uh, in due course. Um, I'd also like to just assure that um, this will continue to happen going forward, so although the target may be reflected at the end of the, of, of, on the, in the third quarter, the work is ongoing. For example, last week, you know, uh, the deputy minister, the CEO, uh, we're in Mpumalanga running an SMME workshop uh, in order to, you know, to activate, you know, the SMME base there. Uh, so that work is an ongoing work uh, that uh, we, we're doing with the PTAs. Uh, third uh, issue is around uh, the partnerships. Uh, there are two broad categories of partnerships that uh, we are pursuing. One is channel partnerships that enable us to be able to build and maintain all our channel relationships in the markets where we, we are able to convert that we continue to do so. And in the markets that are, that are closed, that we keep those relationships going so that when they open up, we actually can, can move with speed. So those channel partnerships we built uh, into the plan. 
And then we've also got partnerships that are around enhancing the personality of the brand. So for example, we have the Netflix uh, partnership, which builds content around uh, the, uh, the entertainment uh, area. Uh, it allows us to influence um, when productions are being made in South Africa, that they cover that enhances its esteem and enhances its, its appeal. And uh, so that is what we're continuing to do on an ongoing basis. And then just finally, I just wanted to highlight the Dubai Expo. It is a big deliverable. It is the biggest um, global event that is happening uh, in uh, the United Emirates. Uh, countries have already been building for the last four years. Uh, we need to get forward momentum around this. We've been working together with the DTIC colleagues and other stakeholders, and we'll continue to do so uh, to deliver against this platform. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank CMO. You. May I ask Amanda to come to the next please? Um, thank you so much, CEO. Um, good afternoon, um, Chair, Honourable Members, Minister, Deputy Minister, um, and colleagues, um, and the Board Chairperson. Um, just to start with, um, I, I thought I'd, I'll just, the first one, the impact of virtual, um, of course it has an impact, but I think what, what is important, what we um, are doing with the industry also, is to make sure that we have packages ready to um, you know, to bring people back and um, to entice them to actually have the, those face-to-face -face meetings. And of course, also um, what really helps us is the long-term bidding uh, for 2023, 24, and we hope by that time, at least the world um, is back uh, to some part of normality. Um, then the, just to uh, link also um, with the CMO on the VTSD, um, we are planning uh, to host, because I think the question also, um, Che, was that, you know, what specifically are we doing? So we identified three, with our tourism authorities, provincial tourism authorities, three towns uh, or small dorpies in each province that we would like to uh, develop, as the, as the Deputy Minister also said, that we like to develop. So making sure that they can host and then for us to test this and, and start to um, really activate it, we are planning or our target is that we will have one um, a meeting in one of these towns in um, the, the second quarter and then one in the third quarter and one in the fourth quarter. We hope that we can have more, um, but we will have to see, but the work is ongoing. And what is very important is that we will have all services render from that village or from that town or from that small dorpy and no imported services, if I can put it that way. Um, then just uh, going into um, visitor experience, um, the improvement or the financial uh, support is really around things like, for instance, the review um, process um, of, of quality assurance. Um, and just to link with that uh, specifically, um, uh, Chairperson, your question on, you know, you, uh, that, they, that it's not uh, for free, um, uh, quality assurance or grading is not for free. Um, we are in a process uh, with the department um, to review policy and hopefully, um, you know, we will we'll have to see what is the outcome of that review. At the moment, I can say that the 100% support through the TIP uh, program, the Tourism in, um, uh, Incentive Program, um, we have 100% um, uh, free, if you, if you like, um, uh, uh, at the moment for certain, for, for those um, establishments that, that qualify and that meet all the, the criteria. Um, that that at the moment um, uh, for this financial year, um, and then just um, on on the eco friendly and green tourism, um, Chair, we also um, in 2019 um, there were accolades on under responsible tourism um, introduced, and so there are quite a few of our um, establishments that that do have that accolade, and we are encouraging and recognize where people are um, having those uh, services and those uh, qualities um, uh, around eco-friendly and green tourism. Um, Chair, 
and to see oh i think that is um more or less all the questions thank you so much thank you amanda and then uh Steph. Thank you, CEO. Good afternoon, honorable members, uh, honorable minister and deputy minister and the board chair. Uh, two comments or reflections from my side. The first one is the question from honorable Makubela around what is it that we're doing in the international space to dispel obviously the myth and, and um, repackaging uh, the messaging. Uh, from uh, from uh, from South African tourism as, as side, what we have been doing, because we do have uh, people on the ground and we do have relationships with trade partners and channel uh, players in general. What we've been doing, we have been continuously engaging with them. In actual fact, uh, our entire 2020 year, uh, part of the work that we've been doing is to engage the, 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 the trade uh, partners, just to inform them what we have been doing uh, you know, as a destination to prepare ourselves, obviously, for when uh, things are a bit open. But the other thing that becomes uh, critical for me to mention is that uh, our relationship with our missions is quite critical in terms of uh, uh, pushing uh, the, the, you know, the common messaging around what the destination is doing to ensure that um, uh, we're, we're dealing with um, you know, the pandemic. A uh, case in point is what the CEO has mentioned earlier in his presentation around the U.S. putting us on level four travel advisory. In there, it's a demonstration of how well we've worked with uh, with the embassy or with the mission. Where uh, obviously, with the mission in Washington, we were able to actually come back, you know, come back and 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 and, and communicate with a single voice, uh, you know, in part in, in partnership with the GCIS, uh, you know, uh, through the messaging that they had prepared for us. But I think it's most the most important thing is we continuously, uh, particularly where we don't have offices, rely on uh, on our missions to carry the word and carry the you know the position of the country in terms of what we're doing around the pandemic. It's going to be very important, um, you know, for us going into this you know financial year, given that obviously our investment levels have come back, uh, that over and above our own platforms where we disseminate information. We will be able to disseminate information even in paid platforms where we previously in our 2020 fiscal year we were unable to do that given that we had you know th those budget cuts. So part of our operational plans is to ensure that we identify media partners that would assist us um, you know to to disseminate uh, information around uh, you know our destination, our readiness in, in in actual fact to receive visitors. But most importantly, I think uh, uh, we've we've taken a very seriously our role in terms of. In the midst of this pandemic, we are communicating uh, what uh, you know uh, the, uh, the trade partners or, or product here in South Africa are doing to actually ready themselves to implement those uh, biosecurity pro protocols. Because, uh, as you can imagine, that safety and, and security has been heightened because of of the pandemic. My second comment uh, is around what Honourable Defreitas has 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 asked around, uh, given the fact that. Um, we would not be able to do this work uh, alone. And just to um, 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 add to what the CMO has said, in market is very important that uh, I just uh, highlight some of the partners uh, that we, we seek to ensure that we can build scale on the work that we do and uh, also actually create the reach that we want. At the core of it all, we know that access is an issue. So airline partnerships become quite important because we can create as much demand as we want. We need the airline, we need the airlift to actually lift people from various you know, destinations to be in the country. Media becomes uh, quite critical. So our media partnership, who we forge our relationship with, becomes critical. We do have our own uh, you know, platforms, but it's important for us to have paid media platforms where we can actually disseminate um, uh, this information. I've already mentioned the importance of, of uh, collaboration with missions. Uh, it is something that uh, we have started doing. In fact, in, in, even here in South Africa, we are partnering with DERCO. Uh, we present to them our plans so that at least they're able to carry uh, the messaging across to various missions. We engage with heads of missions here at DERCO uh, where we share our plans to ensure that we have single messaging and we're reading from the same hymn sheet. The other uh, you know, partners that become very important is we uh, much as we want to create the demand in, in various uh, uh, you know, markets, it's important that we, we stay close to our channel partners. And these are trade partners. These are the people who sell South Africa. So it's important for us uh, to continuously engage them. 
But most importantly, we would like to expand those who are not selling South Africa or would like to tap into those who are selling South Africa, not selling South Africa, but selling competitor destinations to bring them into our books so that they begin to actually look at South Africa as a viable business um, yeah, for them. The, the other partner that becomes quite important, uh, uh, honorable members, is around our partnerships with private sector and non-tourism partners. I think it's important for, for me to mention that, and I think the, C, the CMO has already uh, mentioned that, the more partners we get that would actually enable us to grow our brain stature and awareness, the, you know, the better. So that by the time our borders and things, uh, you know, uh, uh, sort of, uh, uh, you know, return to normalcy, we are ready with, um, you know, uh, 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 with these partnerships. And to that end, we do have a partnership policy that has been approved by the board, which as management, we work, uh, you know, within uh, that ambit. I think it's very important uh, to mention that part of our strategy, even in the a a a APP and AOP, a strategic partnership is what is going to actually help us win to drive the sector recovery. I'm going to uh, uh, put a pin there, CEO, and, and hand back to you. Thank you. Thank you, CEO, and thank you, team, thus far. Uh, let me just then sweep up a couple that have just kind of need to be addressed. I think let me just start off again with uh, Honorable Makvela and uh, just to uh, reiterate, you know, the team's work essentially around the repackaging of the messaging on the variant that there's a lot of work that is happening basically in our offshore offices that may not be apparent um, you know, within the South African environment. I also know that there's a lot of diplomacy work that uh, even the minister is starting to engage at country level to make sure that we can get some of those uh, bans to be lifted uh, as an example. Our budgets have been restored to 2019 levels and uh, where we literally are flat. And again, this is where now we're starting to pull the lever uh, on a lot of the above the line marketing there. Uh, the question around testing and the cost of testing as a, an inhibitor uh, from the perspective. And I think the, 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 the short answer there is that yes, um, it's a competitive environment out there. And the less barriers we have, the more uh, competitive we are. However, we still work within a, a policy environment, a country policy environment. And at the moment, entry into South Africa from uh, outside of the country requires a negative uh, COVID test. And I think until that regime has been changed otherwise, that is kind of what we are uh, continuing on. And that balance between keeping the country safe, but at the same time, allowing trade and free movement of people needs to be balanced there. Uh, Honorable Gumbi, on your uh, question around, um, essentially around tourism protocols, um, I, I must say that, um, the tourism recovery plan was approved by cabinet last week. And in there is all about the norms and standards that now become country standards, you know, in terms of how uh, the different parts of the tourism industry um, come together. And again, here, um, everyone is allowed to come into South Africa, whether you're vaccinated or not vaccinated, essentially. What we do need is a negative test at the ports of entry. And again, that's the current regime that we are under, and we'll continue with it until uh, changed essentially there. Then uh, Honorable Trego, there's a couple of uh, questions there. The first one around 2.1 and uh, your questions around saying that, why is everything just uh, flat for the first three quarters and 100% in quarter four? I think the issues there that we're specifically dealing with is we want to ensure that any audit queries or outcomes that have been raised either by external or internal are fully complied with the, the, the so following year so that there's no repeat there. The issue we have, however, is that the, the, the addressing of them is not linear. So you can't allocate 25% as an example per quarter or even start to guesstimate because you don't know the severity, the depth of the, uh, how long it will take essentially to address these. But what we are sure of is that by the end of the year, we want 100% of them to be addressed. So it could start 10%, 20%, then suddenly it spikes up in the end. We, we just don't know. And honorable member, we don't want to put in targets in there that you again will ask us after a quarter, why didn't you reach this target essentially, right? But what we will do is we will be giving quarterly updates as to how we are progressing. We keep a, a close eye on it to make sure that come at the end of the year, we square flat and meet our objectives there as well. On the question around is the 21 million rivals by 2030 still um, the goal? And uh, it is our um, five-year spread plan, essentially. And until and unless that has been changed, 
that is what we aim towards. And uh, we will be doing everything within our control to make sure that we can pull those levers up. But I think we'll be reviewing it, obviously, through the department as and when required. But for now, as it stands, uh, the five-year straight plan has 21 million by 2030, essentially. Then you asked the question, Honorable Clego, around um, fewer uh, people and the fear of traveling. Uh, what are we doing, basically, from that perspective? The key thing that we are focusing on, as I've said, is on domestic, regional, international, but it's not so much, so much about awareness. Conversion becomes the name of the game. This is why the team is starting to look at partners out there, whereby not only do we show you beautiful South Africa, but there is a call to action that you can book so you can you know, essentially uh, convert you on the spot as opposed to leave you on your own devices to how to get there, et cetera, et cetera. So conversion is the name of the game. So every campaign we do must have a conversion element that drives people because in the, the day, it's the bums in beds and bums in cars, bums in wherever it is that essentially counts at the end of the day. Digital uh, Entrepreneur Clago is having such a huge impact on our business at the moment. You know, we are really migrating from the traditional marketing of above the line, TV adverts, billboards, they're really heavy stuff and moving towards more the digital space. People want to be spoken to personally. And hence we are, you know, appearing in people's iPads, laptops, and, 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 and cell phones, as an example, with bespoke me you know, messaging that speaks to them as well. Digitalization, technology is really the name of the game. Um, the minister uh, opened and launched a hotel, I think in Cape Town about three weeks ago. There are robots that are serving people, you know, and so therefore we have to reimagine what we think and the impact of technology within the tourism industry, essentially. We want to make sure that we are ahead of the curve, you know, from that perspective. I think hence the CFO had said, significant investments is being made on the technology part. Then honorable member uh, Shamina, um, yes, um, net promoter score is essentially a tool that allows the voice of the traveler to be heard. They ultimately decide on how good we are because it is traveler that has a choice to either to come to South Africa or another destination. We want to make sure that their voices are heard and we are able to infuse that in terms of how we deliver. Quality assurance is a stamp of approval that gives people comfort to travel here or within here. Ecotourism, eco-friendly issues are really the topics of the day. And again, it is the industry that needs to adjust itself and make sure that it, it serves it accordingly. Because should we be behind the curve on that one, we become less competitive and compelling as a destination. Then your question around visitor experience. And uh, some of these to kind of give you a sense in terms of what we are spending resources on is welcome campaigns. You know? So when you land at our time at the airport, both domestically and also in the international space, do you feel a welcome to South Africa? Does it really make the, the traveler feel after a 10 hour flight, 12 hour flight, you know, welcome to the destination? Because at the moment, you know, if you land on the international side, the first almost signage of marketing you see is a bank marketing to you, as an example. So already it's transactional. So we want to soften that landing as you're coming in with the welcome, thank you for visiting, et cetera, et cetera. Also as well, when you leave, thank you for visiting us, et cetera, there. If you look at the domestic terminals as well, when you land the domestic terminal or a tambo, what you see there is a supermarket. Spa is selling to you. So we're saying we want to soften these and make them, you know, thank you and, and kind of comforting from that perspective. Ports of entry training is important because if the value chain doesn't work or if our uh, immigration officials, as an example, don't do tourism, are not friendly, it actually kills the entire experience uh, from, you know, inception as well. So this Vista experience is something we are focusing on and make sure we can handhold in those specific areas. And by the way, we're not just looking at airport. We're looking at taxi ranks. We're looking at bus stations. Anywhere our travelers congregate, we want to make sure that we can start to do something uh, from the perspective there. Then lastly, on uh, Honorable Gomba around um, uh, townships and VTSD, uh, just a, a slight uh, emphasis and correction there. Lilizela is in quarter three, and Lilizela is merely the award ceremony for recognition of the players within the industry. Certainly, issues around townships and, and villages are things that we are caring with on a daily basis. Um, I think um, Amanda gave an example of how last week, oh, sorry, the, 
the, the, the CMO gave an example last week where in Bumalanga, again, we want to inculcate SMEs into our product offering because our recovery must be different from how we went into it. And I think these are the hidden gems that we now want to make the stars uh, of the show. So, so that issue around townships is not something pushed into Q3, but lives every day right across the business, both in leisure side and also in, uh, in, in the business event side. Um, Chairperson, I think I've covered as much as I can and then between myself and the team there, I'm now going to hand over back to you, Jen, and thank you. Thanks, well, CEO. Thanks. thanks, CEO and the team. Um, Minister, Deputy Minister, uh, I'm handing over back as well. Yes, um, you are not yet released, but we thank you for the presentations and the responses. Um, we are going to, I just want to say, Minister, um, we are beginning to feel the warmth coming to the township, villages and dorpies after Meman Shapo explained some things which are very, very important. Uh, how they are going to appro- approach it dorpy by dorpy, village by village. It's it actually showing that there is a movement that is actually uh, happening there and it gives us a very great hope, Minister. It's a very good job, let me tell you, that I see coming. Um, I want to take this opportunity to thank our Honourable Minister, Honourable Members. Let's thank our Honourable Minister, Honourable Deputy Minister, uh, our SAT executive, the CEO, as well as, as the chairperson uh, for their presentations and the responses that related to their presentations. And also um, release the members uh, who are from the SAT and request that the members of the committee, portfolio committee to remain behind to look at our um, previous minutes and also our program of, of the committee. Thank you very much for your for your presence and for everything. And you are now released, only the members who must remain on the on the on the hybrid so that we can conclude the business of the day. And thank you very, very much and I release you. You are released. I didn't hear you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank, thank you, you very much, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Okay. Um, Honourable members, thank you very much for your contribution uh, in the previous meeting, in the meetings that we have, and also for the, um, you know, for everything that actually you have raised here. I think we are we are now feeling the, the, the movement um, in terms of tourism in those areas which are really, which were really previously neglected in terms of tourism activities. And also the economy of tourism was actually sidelining such areas such as therapies, villages and townships. So uh, let's go back to our agenda, uh, which is the adoption of the minutes. I don't think that we have done that. Um, and as well as yesterday, I remember the chairperson raised the issue of the, uh, the, the, the work, the program, which we were supposed to, 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 mm. to, to look at. And was it Mr. Poltino who was raising it as part of the agenda? But I didn't hear us going anywhere yesterday with regards to that. Maybe it was because of a uh, time constraints. But I think we let's start with the adoption of the minutes. Anyone who is going to adopt the minutes of yesterday? And also any seconder, please. Any, uh, anybody proposing the adoption of the minutes of yesterday and the, the seconder? Adoption of the minutes. Thank you very much, Honorable. Okay, thank you very much, Honorable Mpuse. Uh, do we have any seconder? Honorable Chair, Honorable Makubela Mashela seconds the adoption of the minutes as a true reflection of what ensued in our previous meeting. I thank you very much, Honorable Makubela. Um, Honorable members, I think we, uh, Honorable Bodino. 
Honorable Patino. Yes. Did you elaborate on the on the program yesterday as you were reading as uh, it to be part of the discussion yesterday? Or you 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 you're not ready to do that today? No, I I think I think we let, let let's do it let's do it today because what what we want to do we want to resubmit this program to the office of the of the house chair uh, so that he, he he can look at it and um, and and approve it. Um, but but the issues that we want the committee chair to to look at it is we we were given the. The, the focus areas by the office of the house chairperson, we look into those um, focus areas and then we crafted the program and then we submitted the program to, to the office of the house chair. And then the only thing that was outstanding was that that program was, um, was really not, not, not uh, um, uh, 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 adopted by, by, by the committee. Now, uh, for, for, for this second term chair, uh, the, the, the allocation of time that has been done by parliament, uh, this term will start from the 4th of May and then it will end on the 4th of June. Then it means we have um, a period of five weeks uh, specifically for committees of parliament to focus uh, on their work in preparation for, for, for the budget votes uh, 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 debate. Now, members will recall yesterday we had our meeting, uh, the 4th of May, with the Department uh, of Tourism on the strategic, on the strategic plan and, and, and annual performance plan. Uh, today is the, is the SAT. Uh, the reason why Chair, we, we have this meeting uh, today, members will recall ordinarily Wednesday is not our meeting day, but uh, because our, our um, debate uh, on budget vote is on the 18th of May, so we thought uh, let, let's, let's bring these days closer so that at least the, the staff can have uh, some sufficient time to work on the program. So, so, so that's why we have this meeting uh, to, today, Chairperson. Um, and then next week on Tuesday, the 11th of May, then we will be tabling the draft uh, committee report on budget vote um, as, 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 uh, of the committee for the committee to consider it. And then for, then the, 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 the following Wednesday, the, sorry, the following Wednesday, the 18th of May, um, and then uh, I am advised the chairperson that the, the budget vote debate uh, on tourism will be on that day, on, on the uh, Tuesday, the 18th of May, uh, from 10 o'clock, I think, up to, up to 12 o'clock. Um, then, the, the, the Tuesday of the 25 uh, May, Chairperson, we have not arranged any meeting for that because reason being that Parliament has arranged those, uh, those budget votes debates to start early in the morning, then they will run throughout the day. So because of that, and then we have not arranged any meeting. Then the, 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 the following Tuesday, Chair, the 1st of June. Uh, Chairperson, the committee will recall that we have a, an outstanding meeting with, with, the, with the South African banks. Uh, Chair will recall that meeting where they were, we proposed that it must be in the second, in the second, uh, second term. Uh, but unfortunately, we can't have it in May because the May is fully booked. So, so what we have communicated to them is that we want to have that meeting on Tuesday on the 1st of June, 2021, uh, from nine up to 12 o'clock. Also, one of the things that we want to do, we will also be inviting the provincial chairs, Chairperson, from the legislatures who are responsible for tourism, also to join that meeting as well, uh, so that uh, uh, after that meeting, if there are other issues in terms of funding tourism, uh, they can take up those, 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 issue, those, those issues with, uh, uh, in their respective provinces. But that's what we want to do. And then the second, the other thing that we want the committee to, 
to to support on on ETHF. Initially, we we were planning the the oversight visit of the committee to Limpopo to be on the second of June up to the sixth of June, but unfortunately, due to changes in the parliamentary program, what we are proposing to the committee to do. Uh, to to uh, to support us because we are proposing that that oversight uh, must take place from um, from this. I just want to look correctly in my data uh, from the seventh of June up to eleventh of June, because what we have also found is that uh, the the at the end of May, uh, there are also budget votes that will still be continuing. For instance, uh, the budget vote of the presidency will be taking place along, uh, along those lines. And then also the budget of parliament as well, it will be taking place along those lines. So what basically we are requesting the committee is just uh, to agree with us so that we can adjust this program from the 7th of June up to 11th of June so that we use that week, uh, Honorable Chairperson. We do understand that week will fall into the constituency period, but uh, um, uh, be it still the same, uh, we want to submit a motivation for that, Chairperson, because we have realized or we saw um, just right, so some time ago in April that there were, whilst we were told it's a constituency period, but some committees were, were, were allowed to, to, to undertake their, their provincial oversight visit. So, so that's why I'm also proposing, Chair, just the, the committee can agree with us, just we adjust the time of an oversight to Limpopo to 7th of June up to 11th of June. We use that whole week, Chairperson. Um, those, those, those are the only issues, Chair, that uh, we, we want the support from the committee. One is that the, the meeting of the first, we will invite the provincial chairs to be part of that meeting. Uh, the second thing is just we adjust, we slightly adjust our program so that the oversight it can start from the 7th up to 11th of June. I thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, uh, 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 Honorable. Mr. Uh, let me not say Honorable. Sorry for that. Yes, Mr. I am not Mr. yet, Chair. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Boltino, I just want to get that when you say the chairs of the of the tourism, are you talking? Are you referring to Le, to Litofo or something else? Mm -hmm. Yes, Chairperson, the, the Chairpersons of committees that are responsible for for tourism in the provincial legislatures. In other words, the oh. the, the Litofo pro, uh, uh, forum chair. Yes, the Litofo forum. Then yes, I understand. Yes, you. yes, we want all of them to be part of that meeting when we have that meeting with the banks. Oh, thank you very much, um, honourable members. Here is the presentation uh, by Mr. Boltino, and it's with regards to the Litofo invitation on the first of um, which month we said. Uh, first of, of June. June. Yes, the 1st of June, as well as the amendment of the date of the uh, oversight uh, visit date to the Popo, which is proposing our recess period, which is the 7th of June to the 11th of June, and which will be during that period, which we feel uh, we must, uh, uh, which he, uh, he thinks we need to um, amend due to the fact that we have so much budget votes in during the month of, of June. And the only time we can do our oversight, undertake our oversight visit will be uh, during our recess period, which is the 7th to the 11th, like other committees are doing. So this is uh, on top of the table. Do we have anybody who wants to contribute towards this? Or are we agreeing to do, towards this so that he can uh, propose that to, to the to the to the relevant structure in Parliament, so that it, the, uh, the the program is adjusted. Any mover for adoption of this um, re, um, presentation by Mr. Boltina? Thank you, Shepherdson. Chair, Thank you very I much, think Senator. I agree with the, with the proposed program. A table by Mr. Poltina Chair. 
but also noting what he is raising in terms of the planned visit uh, that we had during Constituency Week, which was not approved. Maybe the chairperson or, and, and the WIP must make a follow-up uh, on that so that uh, they don't uh, undermine the committee by uh, rescheduling our planned uh, uh, program uh, and prioritize uh, other committees, uh, chairperson. Thank you very much. Honorable uh, Pusha, I think it's not... Um... If I didn't, if I, I had uh, Mr. Boltina well, he spoke about the the the, the budget vote, the which visits. are uh, the, the, the no, plenaries. No, it's the visit, yes. Honorable Komba. Okay. The oversight visit. Yes. Okay. Maybe I didn't hear you well. It's the oversight visit that we were to undertake in, yes. Yes, during the constituency period. Okay, so maybe if you can clarify that as there again, I forgot, I didn't hear you properly there. What are you um, saying about them, yes? Um, uh, uh, what, what I'm saying is that the, the chairperson must, are you, are you asking me to clarify or Mr. Putin? Um, no, um, let me, let me hear you again. Probably I misunderstood you. So that the, the committee can also have the better understanding. Maybe it's not only me who's confused with your proposal. Chairperson, oh. oh, uh, what, what, what we are proposing to the committee chair is that um, if you look at the parliamentary program at this stage, chair, as it has been made available, uh, if, if you look at that program, you will see towards the end of May, there, there are a, a, a lot of um, a budget votes debates that are scheduled. Uh, amongst those budget votes, you will find the, the budget vote of, of, of parliament. Um, you will also find the budget vote of, 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 of the presidency. Therefore, it, if we can use those dates, those dates can impact on what we, we intended to do. Therefore, what we are proposing the committee to support us is just for us as a portfolio committee uh, to, re, to, to slightly adjust our oversight program so that it can start on the 7th of June and then it ends on the, on the, on the 11th of June. And then we use that whole week in, uh, of, 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 uh, of undertaking the, the visit to Limpopo. Um, and then, then if the committee agrees with us, what we will do, we will send back this program to the office of the house chair as a revised program for reconsideration chair. Thanks, Chairperson. Okay, thank you for clarifying you, that, uh, on, uh, Mr. Bordino. Um, Honorable Mpushe, you can come in now. Yes, Chair. Yes, Chair. My point, Chairperson, was that uh, previously we have submitted and, and, and our submission was not approved on the basis that uh, there was a constituency week. It was during the constituency week. My humble plea, therefore, is that the whip and the chairperson must intervene on the fact that they must approve our uh, planned program uh, or planned visit uh, 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 as the exco uh, chairperson. I'm not sure if you hear me, Chair. Yes, I hear you, uh, Honorable Mbushe. Your That is your proposal for, for the chair and the whip to approve. Uh, but this is the matter that must be approved by the portfolio committee. No, no, no. Uh, it cannot be approved by anyone, anyone else besides mm -hmm. the portfolio committee. This is how I think the protocol As goes. They, we, in terms are, no, no. we are going to make submission. Mm -hmm. I can yeah, like a chairperson because my understanding is that the we are going to make a submission for approval. If if then does I personally approve the planned pro 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 program for the committee for submission, but with a disclaimer that it must be approved also where we are going to be submitting, thinking that they will be submitting to the exco. 
Okay. Re um, maybe let's, let, let me hear other members because I hear your point is very clear. Uh, Honorable uh, Makubela, with your previous experience, because some of the things I'm not very much familiar with them, especially the processes of these approvals. Maybe you can advise the committee or any other member who knows the previous ex from the previous experience on how these processes are being, are being processed. Thank you. Anyone, Metrenko uh, or Mema Kubele, please assist us and advise us and, and the committee, maybe whoever can advise us. Honorable Defrators, also you are there. Please, let's all contribute to this, towards this. Uh, uh, Chairperson, if I may come in, o on our side, Chair, the, uh, the, the proposal is, 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 already, is already available. It's just for the committee to say, yes, we agree as a portfolio committee that this oversight to Limpopo must take place on the 7th of June up to 11th of June. Then once the committee says that, then what we will do, this proposal, it will go to our chair, uh, uh, um, uh, to sign it off. Then once the chair signs it off, then it will go to the to the to the office of the of the house chairperson for reconsideration. Chair. Thank you. Now you have made it even more simpler. Does the committee of honourable Yes, that's how I understand the chairperson. Hence, I'm saying as agree. the committee, I agree with the proposal. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's so simple now. Do you have any seconder of the approved uh, proposal? Any seconder? Chairperson, uh, uh, this is uh, Lucizo on the platform. Uh, I, would, I, would, I would want to come in and second the proposal as presented by the Secretariat. However, indicate that uh, this this planned uh, oversight is planned during constituency period. Then allow for uh, members of the, of, the, of the portfolio to go in further, look at their constituency programs, because we might agree and yet we find that a contingent of not so many members are able to travel during that constituency period to the oversight because we have other constituency uh, programs or there are constituency programs that are already uh, planned by uh, other members. Allow for that flexibility for us to go and uh, visit our programs and then come back and uh, further uh, have our say on the, on the planned uh, oversight. Um, now, Mr. Boltino, what is your deadline to have, have uh, submitted this proposal so that we can exhaust this matter also? Uh, because you also have time frames that you need to have submitted the, the plan. Uh, Chair, I, I will appreciate it if in the next committee meeting, just members could, 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 could indicate they are, they are a different situation. Yeah, there are different situations. Okay, now it means in the next coming uh, portfolio committee meeting, we'll, we'll uh, mm -hmm. have responses individually to say, I'm available, I'm not mm -hmm. available. And those who are not available will not be available for the study visit. For the, for the, but those who are available will go because we cannot hold this whole thing because of individual things. We are having a challenge here of different constituency with their dynamic uh, 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 problems. So we cannot all be uh, having the same type of uh, situations. And therefore, if others are, I think, available to, to take uh, over the work and, be, uh, and represent the committee, uh, during the constituency office, I think because it is in the program and it, that program has been planned. And unfortunately, this, this is the situation. Those who are available will look at the number, whether it makes sense, then we, those who are available will have to continue. Uh, I, I, I think uh, Mr. Boltino will make an indication uh, as to how many people are available for, to undertake the study visit during the, the recess. 
Okay, thank that, you. That, that's thank how you I thanks. think I want to end up this whole issue, but I think proceed because the matter has been approved um, and proposed and it was seconded. The item is proposed and seconded and therefore it just needs your submission and also the next coming meeting, you'll be able to see how many people are available. Thank you very much. Uh, I think this is how I am winding up this whole matter. And uh, also, um, I, we have come to the end of the meeting and I would love to thank every one of the members who attended this um, important meeting. And thank you very much and goodbye. And the meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Chair. <clears throat> Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Gomba. You did well on your birthday. Ish, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Gomba. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. I'm just going to have my dinner now for my birthday. Bye-bye. <laughs>
provide some indication because what I wanted to say, I thought uh, the, on the announcements part, we would just indicate that if it is possible, at the latest, maybe we can avail the report to them on Sunday evening, failing which on, on Monday morning in preparation for Tuesday. Yeah, maybe let's, yeah, let's... I, I, I'm not sure because I don't want to say we must say Fridays, so otherwise it might be. No, because, yeah, because they have to put. I, yeah. I, 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 I think Sunday will be fine. Yeah, so Sunday, so let's say Sunday evening or Monday, yeah. Monday morning. And yeah, I, I will try to push for, for Sunday evening and see how far we go. But I think. Yeah, I, I, I think we'll be able to, to get something mm. done. Mm. Okay, okay, can forward. Yeah. Okay, um, I, I think on my side, those, those are the only, the only matters. I'm not sure. Yeah, and I think that's it. Yeah, on my side, is that, yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah, no, let's, yeah, but, but with other things, then we will, we will talk. Then. But yeah, I think uh, Sunday will be fine, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think let, let's let so that we can have at least some couple of days uh, between now and that time. Mm. Mm, because I because I mean I don't have Saturday, so it's just oh, that's I what I'm thinking. And even to and... me, so, even to me, Sunday it's a difficult uh, yeah, yeah. day. And, no, but, and but, then, yeah, but we yeah. only have the time in the afternoon on Sunday. Mm. Mm. Hmm. No, I mean, let me, yeah, I'll, I'll get the draft to you, yeah. Let, let, let me promise Sunday, we will see how things pan out, but we, we huh. will talk if, yeah, but uh, I'll try for Sunday evening and see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, go sharp, okay, Okay. Sure, sharp, sharp, sharp.